Now there's evidence to prove what was already known, that here there was a massacre. The liberators of Sinjar pick through the human wreckage of a mass grave thought to contain the remains of 70 Yazidis. Human hair, sewing scissors, keys, all belonging to older women who the Islamic State fighters separated from their daughters and granddaughters when they overwhelmed the town. More than a year after the U.S. president began airstrikes against the Islamic State urged on by the threat of a Yazidi genocide, it fell to Kurdish troops, backed by those strikes, to win Sinjar town back. It may no longer be under Islamic State control, but 2,000 Yazidi girls and young women are. A fact one of the most powerful women at the United Nations is determined the world should not forget even after the terror wrought in Paris and the continuing refugee crisis lapping at Europe's shores. Zainab Bangura was once a refugee herself. I left Sierra Leone on a fishing boat. I arrived in Guinea, seasick. After eight hours trip, I was sent back into the sea. I was refused to land and I spent another seven hours at the sea. I understand the pain, the humiliation, and you're treated with disdain and contempt. I also come from a country that went through 12 years of war. Zainab Bangura now documents abuse against women and girls. She's a regular visit to the refugee camps of Jordan and Turkey crammed with Syrians. The only way to stop the influx, a political solution, she says, that ends the violence driving children like these from their homes. But it is the sexual violence used by Islamic State fighters against Yazidi girls and women as an instrument of terror that has tested even her understanding. We have misunderstood them, we have underestimated them, and we have done it at our own peril as an international community. She says it's not unusual that rape is used as a weapon of war, but the Islamic State is buying and selling women and girls, complete with sales contracts, warehouses and markets. They are selling the girls out. They bring the girls out into the open market. They strip them naked. They prize them. They rape them in other conflicts, but they don't sell them. Among the girls she's met and interviewed are two teenagers now rehoused in Germany, receiving social and psychological support. Daesh came to our village. It was about noon. They collected all of us, then divided the men and women from one another. They took all of our money and our mobile phones. They divided us up and made a lottery. They wrote our names on pieces of paper. Then the men took a piece of paper, saw which name was on it. We then belonged to that man. So I met a young girl. I think she must have been like 15. So this sheikh, when he came for the first time to rape her, he came with a stick and a gun. And he asked the girl, what do you want, me, the stick or the gun? And the girl said, I'll take the gun. He said, I didn't buy you to kill you. You're going to be my sex slave. The teenagers now in Europe only escaped those who enslaved them after trying to take their own lives. I tried to kill myself four times. I tried twice to cut my artery. And one time I took tablets. Another time I drank a household liquid. I watched my friend kill herself in front of us. This is a statement of Baba Sheikh. Yes, this is unprecedented in the world. To encourage their girls to stay alive, the leaders of the conservative Yazidi movement have taken an historic step. The religious leaders among the Yazidi decided we cannot continue to allow the stigma that is associated with sexual violence or rape to be embedded on our girls. And say, so these are our girls, we need to accept them back, which has never been done anywhere in the world. So once the pronouncement was made by the high priest that you can come back, we welcome you, the girl stopped committing suicide. The suicide rates reduced, and then more, more of the girls decided to come back on there. So they find every ways and means to escape. At a secret location near a European airport, there's a joyful reunion with those two Yazidis who she first met in Iraq shortly after they'd fled the Islamic State. Hello, how are you? Fine. <laughs>
You told me you wanted to be a teacher in Lalish. So, so I told you that you must be the teacher, not so? Best way you can punish ISIS. You are actually the teacher. Is to be what you wanted to be. Because ISIS attack your village to destroy you. So what you need to do is to prove to them that they've not succeeded. And the only way you can prove that is for you to succeed. So this is a book, this is a pen, and you have to write. And when you are old, you can use it to teach other people. ISIS has to be defeated because every day they are committing more crimes. They are destroying more lives, they are destroying more community. So the longer they stay, the more difficult it becomes to rebuild those societies. It has to be done at whatever cost.